Hey guys, it's Dylan Loomis. So San Francisco just got 36 new superchargers up to 250 kilowatts, which would be the version three, but maybe even more importantly, J Bay Babe commented, we just got our first four superchargers here in Romania. Now look, I know superchargers are not the most exciting Tesla topic, but the fact is we need the ubiquity of gas stations to be the same for superchargers. This is what we have to have happen for that true widespread mass market adoption of Tesla, so it's absolutely a thread to monitor closely. The Wikipedia page for Tesla superchargers has the Q1 2021 count at 2,699 superchargers. These are the actual locations and they have a total of about 24,500 supercharger stalls. And I wanted to show you this cool little website if you didn't know about it, it's just supercharge.info and then this is the charts tab. So you can kind of see a rough tracking of the growth of the supercharging locations with this chart. So if you go to 2019, you can see that started the year with about 1,400 locations and 2020 bumps us up to about 1,700. 2021 takes us to about 2100. So on average, Tesla is adding anywhere from 400 to 700 supercharging locations, each with about 10 supercharging stalls per location every year. And this site will also break it down by region. So North America definitely has the most, followed closely by Asia Pacific and then Europe. Those are the top three. And if you remember back in March, Tesla claimed a new count saying they deployed over 6,000 supercharger stalls at roughly 760 locations in China. And as we now know, Tesla is making the V3 superchargers in Shanghai. This plant or this factory can make up to 10,000 charging stations stations, just the single stalls per year. The construction of the factory started in August of 2020 and was completed in a half a year. And like I said, if we go on that rough average of 10 stalls per supercharging location, the new factory could theoretically equip up to 1,000 new locations per year. And to set the context, Tesla built 743 new sites or locations with 7,100 charging points or stalls worldwide the entire year in 2020. So of course, different sites may have slightly different data points, but overall it gives us a rough idea of annually what kind of growth the supercharger network is seeing. And for the dinner party talk to be that super Tesla fan, Tesla built the superchargers at Fremont to start, but they switched and now they're making V3 superchargers in the States at Giga New York. And so apparently there was a Tesla Clubhouse chat last night and I think Sawyer Merritt either hosted it or was in it giving some supposed insider speculation rumors, whatever you wanna call it. And Jeff, uh, Jeff Tutorials on Twitter shared some information. Lots of info, Tesla is sandbagging Model S and X stats. The real numbers are way more impressive. V4, 350 kilowatt supercharging. V11 software redesign releasing very soon. Tesla Elon timelines that could mean months and the no radar autopilot announced next week. This is all potentially coming at that June 3rd delivery event for the Model S Plaid. Now look, I was not in this clubhouse chat so I can't confirm but reading through the Reddit comments and the forums, Apparently people were asking questions and Sawyer was either confirming or denying or saying no comment to a lot of this type of speculation. And this is what Jeff seemed to think there's a good chance that we might be seeing this in the coming weeks. Now take this for whatever you want to. I do not want to be that guy spreading rumors and false speculation, but at the same time, it's hard not to be excited about things like this. And Sawyer Merritt has been legit. I really like the work that he does. He doesn't get everything perfectly right, but I do think he has some inside sources, whatever that may mean. So I definitely listen when he mentions or confirms stuff like this. So something to keep an eye on, but all I know is I'm definitely excited for that June 3rd event. I wish I could be there, but I definitely hope it's gonna be streamed. I'm not sure if it will be, but Keep an eye on this stuff for sure. But I wanna know from you of this list, what would you be most excited about and what do you think we're most likely to see on that June 3rd event? And I'm just saying, if you remember back on the Q3 2020 call, Jerome Guillen did have that comment where he said Tesla is looking at 350 kilowatt chargers for its vehicles. And remember, Tesla introduced its V3 superchargers in March, 2019. So it has been two whole years which means it could be reasonable to expect a V4 sometime this year. The major question would be this, is this a software unlock that can unlock these 350 kilowatt speeds or would it be all new hardware installation? That's a big question, I don't know, I would just be speculating. 
but we'll wait and see. And I just randomly saw this tweet this morning from Alvin Fu, India builds solar plants atop canals to save land and water. So they're literally doing this to save the water from evaporating, which I think is awesome, super resourceful. And this is the type of innovation that's simple, but it's all about that sustainability. And so whoever decided to do that, good on you. A real quick anecdote that I linked below if you wanna go through this specific story about solar roof installations. Once again, it's just one story, but it highlights a lot of things that are going on with the Tesla solar roof installation process and the problems and the unexpected things that we aren't even thinking about that can arise that are delaying this installation process for a lot of customers. So if you wanna read that, it's linked below. Tesla owners online tweeted, a source told them the Plaid Model S will display a going to Plaid animation when a launch is initiated on the instrument display. For those Spaceball fans where this whole thing originated, I'm sure they'll definitely love that. I've never seen the movie, please don't at me. And I had a random thought about these Giga castings from Giga Texas for the Model Y, the front piece. Does anyone else think they could be sending these to Fremont to make the Model Y there since they already have the rear casting there? They could be adding the front casting. Now, I don't know if they'd be doing structural packs or anything like that, but is there a chance that these are being made in mass now to be sent to Fremont before any actual production starts at Giga Texas? What do you guys think? Yesterday, there was this tweet that went overlooked from this Chinese account that said, according to reports, the latest disclosure from Tesla is that more than 90% of the cars produced at Shanghai have been localized in terms of parts. So I don't know if they mean that 90% of the cars made there get 100% of their parts sourced locally. Last time I heard the number was not that high. So if anybody has any more insider information on this, please let me know. That would definitely be a great sign in terms of margins in the coming quarters. But I'm a little skeptical because it says the latest disclosure from Tesla and I don't think Tesla disclosed that. Unless I missed it, I could definitely be wrong. And so we kind of knew this was coming, but Tesla finally announced a new data center officially in China after all those cars being banned from military bases because of people worrying about the cameras on the Tesla cars thinking that Tesla was trying to spy on China. And I say we knew it was coming because last month, Tesla said that it will store all data collected in Chinese cars locally in China. This is how they're going to do that. Tesla issued a statement on its Weibo account. We have established a data center in China to achieve data storage localization and will continue to add more local data centers. All data generated from the sales of vehicles in the Chinese mainland market will be stored in China. At the same time, we will open the vehicle information query platform to car owners. This work is in full swing. Basically, they're saying Tesla car owners will have the ability to access their data, their information, kind of like recovering a black box from an airplane in the event of a crash and probably other information too, but we don't have a whole lot of detail here yet. And it's true that a secure database accessible online through your Tesla account credentials has been something that Tesla owners have been requesting for a while. And I wanted to share some perspective on this article about officials in Russia now wooing Elon and Tesla to come to their locations. So I won't cover specifics, but as you can see, multiple different government officials and people in politics have reached out via Twitter and social media to Elon and Tesla, basically giving them the pitch about why Tesla should come to their location. But to clear things up about what Elon said about establishing a presence in Russia does not necessarily mean a factory. It could mean superchargers, it could mean service centers, it could mean showrooms. We don't necessarily know for sure. And I am not saying it's not going to happen, but just to help us keep an open mind and to think through all of these different perspectives, there is this comment, the Russian government on every level requires businesses to pay otkat, which is Russian slang for bribe and an amount of certain percentage of project expenses. Basically, it's just a kickback or a bribe. And there was a little bit of profanity, so we'll skip that. But those statements are for internal use. Basically, these politicians reaching out to Elon to brainwash the population. You can tell it's the case, even by the fact most of them didn't bother to translate their welcomes into English. And then another one, Russia is the last place I'd want to expand to. Not only is their luxury auto market market small, about 140,000 cars a year. Their best-selling luxury car only sells 8,000 units a year. Russians are very pro oil and gas because the economy largely depends on it. There are plenty of other markets to expand into that are less corrupt and not facing crippling sanctions. Now look, I'll be honest, I know very little truth about Russia and the situation and the government. Of course, I hear stories just like everybody else, but if you have actual information or you've lived there or you've been there, or you have family there and you have information about this situation, I would love to hear your opinion on Tesla expanding into Russia, whatever that may look like. But that's all for today. Please Please like this video if you did. A big thank you to everybody on the next screen and I hope you have a great day.